Hi everyone, welcome to the Oakland's YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we are going to make something that I have seen everywhere for a while. As you know, the 90s style is coming back. We made a fanny pack a little while ago. And I've seen bucket hats all over the place, from like Target, local places, to designer boutiques, all over social media. Everybody's making, wearing the bucket hats. So you know what? Why not just jump on that bandwagon? Let's make a bucket hat today, except our bucket hat is going to be reversible. Okay, so I gotta be honest, this is one of the easiest, quickest things you're gonna make. I, I don't know why I put it off for so long for some reason, because it's not a bag, right? And, and bags are kind of my thing. That's, that's what I know how to do, it's what I'm comfortable with. This is more considered apparel, accessory, apparel, I don't know, what do you think it is, accessory or apparel? Uh, but either way, this was something that I was kind of putting it off for a while. And I don't really know why, it actually came together so easily, so quickly. So for the template for this today, we're actually going to be using one from Mood Designer Fabrics. I'll have a link for it down below. All you have to do is go to the link, you do submit your email address, and then they will email you the pattern and the template for free. Now their pattern is not for a reversible version, their pattern is just for like one version raw edges on the inside. So I think that's a great place to start if you've like never sewn anything before. I think start with theirs and then move over to ours. We're gonna be making a reversible one today. Now here's the thing, I'll put it on. I know I just keep holding it, let's put it on. This is a very big size. Now, I, now I gotta be honest, it's kinda chic, isn't it? Look at that. I'm gonna flip it up so you can see me a little bit better. Okay, so this is a size large. Now, you can see on the pattern here, there's all these different lines. So there's lots and lots of sizes. Hold on, how many sizes are there? So there are actually eight different sizes going all the way down for a one to two year old child to even bigger than this. This is a size large and there is a size extra large. Now the size large is very big. I have a pretty big noggin, that's why I picked the size large. It is very loose. But honestly, I love how wide this brim is. Like if I was out gardening, this is the perfect, perfect hat for that. But there are smaller versions where, you know, the brim is a little bit shorter, it's a little bit tighter. So we're gonna play with that today. So as you can see, this one is reversible. I use some fun like barbecue fabric for here. So we've got like the watermelon and the ants and all the yummies on the top and then take it off. And all you have to do is whew, nighttime, put this side on. I've got 4th of July feels if you can't tell. And then look, we've got nighttime treats, fireworks on the brim. Once again, if I was out like gardening, I would have the brim down like this. I don't need to be looking up, I'm looking down. But for everyday wear, I would just flip up the brim a little bit and then I have like a blossom look here, right? Isn't that cute? All right, so this is the first and only one I've made so far and I'm actually not done with it, but this is probably as basic as it's gonna get. For this version here, I used all quilt cotton, cotton woven. Uh, the type of non-stretchy material you're gonna find at the quilt shop or at Joann's, things like that. This is what you're gonna find the most options of. So it's quilt cotton on the top, quilt cotton on the brim. I did not apply any interfacing at all to the top portion, so the circle top and then the little band right here. There's no interfacing. All that is, is the material. I did apply interfacing to the brim because I wanted that to be a little bit firmer. So for the brim, I applied one layer of So Fuse Plus only to one side, so only to, I believe, the side with the ants. I applied it there. The side here with the fireworks, it doesn't have any interfacing at all on it. Sofuse Plus is a little bit of a firmer interfacing. You could actually apply two layers and give it a very, very nice structure, so that's something. We're not gonna do that today, but if you wanted to, you know, you can see this is, it's still floppy-ish, but it does have some firmness, so it sticks out, it doesn't droop down like this. However, if you wanted to make sure it stayed perfectly flat, and there's like no flip or flop to it, uh, I would apply two layers of the Sofuse Plus. So this is where I started. Now I'm gonna make a couple alterations to this at the end of the video. First, you can see we have one row of stitching along the bottom edge here. I'm gonna add a few more rows of stitching because that's, that is just like the nice bucket hat design. A few more rows of stitching there. You can see if I pull the lining and the exterior apart, it completely comes apart. It's only really attached right there at the very edge. So what I was wondering is I'm going to try adding another row of stitching right here, if you guys can see. I'm gonna apply another row of stitching right here in the seam, so that seam that connects the top and then the flap. I'm gonna go through the exterior and the lining all the way around to hold that together really nice, so that way the brim never becomes detached, right? It always, always stays just like this. 
The other thing I might add to this hat right here is a couple grommets. Now you can put a couple little metal grommets on the back. That allows some airflow. You can put them on the bottom, you can put them on the top. Uh, if you do that, it allows nice airflow in the hat. So if you're very sweaty or if you're using material that doesn't breathe very well, you do want to make sure your hat can like release the heat, you know what I mean? Uh, but we could also add some grommets here and then add like a drawstring or some sort of a ribbon and that way we can pinch this tighter if we want it to be tighter. So let me show you what I mean. So if I put the hat on, you can see it's very big, right? It's just very big around my head too. So if I pinched the back here somehow, you know, and I had like a little cord where I could zip it up, then I can make it a little bit tighter or looser depending on how I'm gonna need to wear it, right? So if I'm like at the tennis courts or if I'm running around, I don't wanna worry about my hat flying off, so I could do that. You could also add some strings to the bottom, like one here and one on the other side, so that way you can zip it up, you know, like drawstring it up kind of underneath your neck. You could add ribbon around the top of it. You could add a sweatband. There's so many things you could do with this pattern, but I'm gonna list out what we're trying today, okay? So I had planned to try out all these different variations before the tutorial, but then I thought, you know what, let's just figure it out together. This will be fun. This way we, you can see the mistakes I make. We can work it out together, see what works, what doesn't. And if you have any tips, leave them down in the comment section below. If you have anything else you'd like to see, let me know. But this is what we're gonna do today. So in the first hat, we're gonna try using some vinyl. Very lightweight, very, very lightweight vinyl. We're gonna try using vinyl. And we're gonna try using cotton canvas. We're also going to interface our cotton woven. So the exterior part of the hat will be vinyl and cotton canvas, no interfacing on the cotton canvas. The lining part is gonna be a quilt cotton or cotton woven material. And we're gonna use just basic woven interfacing. I'll be using Sofuse. And I'm interested to see if that little bit of extra interfacing and then the vinyl, if it makes it a much more structured hat. And the size of that hat is going to be for a six to 10 year old child. So it's probably not gonna fit my head, but I do wanna see how the structure works for that one. For the second version, we're going to be making a size adult small. And for that one, we're gonna be using predominantly quilled cotton again and a little bit of waterproof canvas, which I think will be really nice for the brim. In this version, I actually have a piece of fusible fleece cut out. Now, I really don't know about using fusible fleece for this hat. It's gonna make it hot. So I only cut out a section of fusible fleece for the brim. We'll see once we get there if we wanna use it or not, but I did cut it out. Honestly, with this type of hat, I really think that if you want it to be more structured, use cotton canvas or add some interfacing to your quilt cotton. But like I said, this right here is the most like easy, breezy, beautiful hat uh, without any interfacing or anything, just the fabric, just thrown together. And I think it's the perfect, I mean, I feel like it's the perfect summer hat. I don't really want my head to be that hot in the summer. So, so we'll see, we'll try out a few different things. We're gonna try two different methods of closing the hat. The hat method I did on this one is where I left the little gap on the brim, turned it all out through the brim, there you go. We're gonna try another method in case you don't wanna have to figure out how to top stitch on a curve um, with an opening like that. So we'll try that as well. So a few different things, and then for the final hat, we're gonna return back to this first hat here. We're going to stitch down some lines along the brim. We're going to stitch down right here along the seam, maybe add some grommets. We'll see. We'll see. So I'll have timestamps for all of these down in the description down below. All you have to do is click the little triangle over here and it'll expand the description. That's also where you're gonna find the pattern, any material that I'm using, links for things, things like that. I'm also gonna keep a little running checklist right over here of what we're trying, what's working, what's not working. So if you're interested, go ahead and check that. There are so many other things I wanna try with this pattern. I wanna try a sweatband. I wanna try adding ears to it. I mean, there's just so many other things I wanna try with this bucket hat. So if there's anything you'd like to see, make sure you leave a comment down below and maybe we'll do a part two of this video where it's just funsy alterations. All right, guys, let's get started. So you can really use whatever template you want. Pretty much all of the bucket hats that I've seen have the same three pieces. You have the top, which is a circle. You have the base of the top of the hat, which is this shape like this, and then you have the brim. Okay, so since we're making a reversible bucket hat, we need more than what the pattern I'm using calls for. So this is what we're gonna use. We're gonna use two pieces for the crown of the bucket hat. One of these I'm using is a cotton canvas material, and then the other one is a cotton woven, so it's a much more lightweight piece of material, but I already added some woven interfacing to it. So I'm using Sofuse. You could also use SF101 from Pellon. And then for the side panel, I have four cuts. I have two cuts of the exterior 
and two cuts of the lining. Again, the exterior is that cotton canvas, the lining is the quilt cotton, and it already has the interfacing applied to it. You could get very, very creative with this. You could embroider things on this. You could add your heat transfer vinyl to this. You could mix everything up. I mean, you can see for me, the exterior is all the same material, but it doesn't have to be. All three of these pieces could be different and it would look amazing. Remember how we're doing color blocking? This would be a great color blocking one. And then you're going to need the brim. Now pretty much all the patterns call for four cuts for the brim because even if you're not making it reversible, you will see the underside of the brim when you're wearing it, so you need something underneath there. So I have two cuts of my exterior. So my exterior this time is vinyl, but this is a very, very lightweight vinyl. I wanna try this before I try any heavy stuff. So this is a very lightweight, fun vinyl. This is gonna go with the cotton canvas. And then for the lining section, I get once again have the cotton woven or quilt cotton. And then I interfaced that with woven interfacing and I interfaced it with the Sofuse Plus. So one layer of Sofuse, regular Sofuse, and then one layer of Sofuse Plus, which is a firmer interfacing. If, like I said, you wanted this to be very structured, add two layers of your Sofuse Plus. The vinyl I'm using does not have any interfacing at all on it. All right, so building this is going to be pretty much the same all the time. For this pattern here, I'm going to close the hole, so since we are making this reversible, we will leave one small hole when we piece it all together and we'll turn it all out through that hole and then we'll close up that hole. For that, I'm going to leave the hole on the edge of the brim, so the outer edge of the brim, which means we will be closing a hole on the outside of our material on a curve, which can be a little tricky, but I'm gonna show you how to do that for this size and then the next one we're gonna try a different way to close it. So the first thing we wanna do is work on our curvy pieces. So we can put that one to the side I'm gonna take both of my exterior pieces for the side panel and lay them right sides together, lining up all the edges perfectly. I know I'm not going over material and stuff today because I really think you can use anything. Whatever type of needle you like to use, that's gonna be great. Whatever type of thread you like to use, that's gonna be great. I mean, I really don't have suggestions. I suggest clips or pins, however you wanna hold this together that's gonna be great. So we don't have a lot of stuff we really need to be precise about today. So I'm gonna do this for both the exterior and the lining pieces. So I'm gonna set those to the side and for the sake of time, we'll work on the brim as well. So I'm gonna take both of my exterior brim pieces and lay them right sides together. And then clip along these short edges right here. That's where we're gonna be sewing, the short straight edges. And then make sure you repeat that for the lining pieces. Once again, right sides together. Okay, so now we have all of our short edges clipped and we're gonna sew along each one of these edges at a half of an inch seam allowance. I do suggest you backstitch at the beginning and the end of each one of these. Okay, so let's put the side panels to the side for a moment and just focus on the brims. So I'm gonna take my brim and I'm gonna fold the seam back. So this has the firmer interfacing. Now your brim's not gonna lay flat like a donut, okay? It's going to be like this. It's gonna go up, it's supposed to. But on the back, what you wanna do is press those seams open. Now, if you wanna grab an iron and iron this open, you can. I'm just gonna press it with my fingers. There we go. So I'm gonna do this for the lining and also the exterior. You can see this is my cotton woven, my quilt cotton version over here on this side. And because it has those two layers of interfacing, the Sofuse and the Sofuse Plus, it's much stiffer and thicker than my vinyl. Again, this is a very lightweight vinyl. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna top stitch along both edges of the seams on the flap, so we're not worried about the side panels, it's just the flap, so on each seam, for each flap, top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance around each side of the seam. Okay, so these brims are 
ready for now. Let's put them to the side and now let's work on the top of the hat. So grab your sides and press open those seams. If you can press this with an iron, that's going to be ideal. So I'm just going to finger press open the seams and then give it a quick press with my iron from the back of the material. Do this for both your exterior and your lining sides. So before we attach them all, to make it a little bit easier, let's find some midpoints. First, let's take our side panels and fold them together so that the seams match up right sides together. And then when you pull it like this, gently, you'll find the midpoints between those seams. That's what we want. Pretty much we want to know midpoints for every quarter of each edge. So I'm just going to grab some scissors and make a teeny tiny clip right along that corner and that's going to mark my midpoint for me. I also want to do this on the bottom. So keeping those seams lined up just like that, I'm going to fold it in half and then snip right along the fold on the larger opening side. Do this for both of your side panel units. Once you have those marks made on the side panel, we want to make four marks on the crown as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my circle and I'm going to fold it together in half, like a little taco. And then I'm just going to mark or cut right at the folds. And this will give me my first set of midpoint marks. And then using those little midpoint marks I just snipped, I'm going to fold it again, matching up the midpoint marks this time on the top here of my taco shell. And then I'm going to fold down and then snip right along the edge. There we go. On both sides. So now I have quarter marks made, which doing all this just makes it easier to line this all up because we are sewing curves. Curves can be tricky. So the more points you have on both panels to line up, the easier it's going to be. So I'm going to do the same thing with the lining piece, just marking those four quarter marks. So now I'm going to grab my exterior side and my exterior crown. And with the smaller opening, which is right here, up, and my exterior sides, wrong sides out, I'm going to take my exterior circle crown and I'm going to lay it right side down. And so it's going to go on the top just like this. So everything is wrong sides out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the marks that I made on my crown. I'm going to line it up with the seam for the side panel and I'm going to clip those together. I'm going to take the mark on the opposite end of that one and making sure these materials are right sides together, I'm going to line it up with the other seam on my side panel. There we go. So we're just matching up midpoints. Give it a little tug, flatten it out a little bit. And now I'm going to match up the other marks as well. So those quarter marks or other midpoint marks, you're going to match up those. So I'll end up with four parts clipped here. And then I'm just going to kind of tuck in this circle and go around the edge clipping it together. You might find that the circle part here, because I'm tucking it in like a bowl, but the circle part here is pretty wavy. That's okay. I'll show you how to deal with that. For right now, just get it all clipped together. And one thing I'm focusing on is getting the raw edges matched up. I just don't want one edge to be, you know, a quarter inch lower than the other and on the inside of the hat. All right, so this is where I'm at, and you can see I have a lot of like bubbling on the inside. That's normal. Uh, to help with that, I'm gonna cut into this side panel, so not the circle panel, the side panel. So every half an inch or so, I'm gonna cut a little bit of the material right along the edge that's about a quarter inch in. We're gonna be using a half of an inch seam allowance, which is pretty big, so you have quite a bit of room to work with here. So just every half inch or inch, honestly, even, yeah, probably every inch or so. I'm just cutting a little quarter inch mark into the material. And honestly, normally I do not pre-cut these. I usually wait till I'm at the sewing machine and I cut these as I need to. As I'm sewing, if I see like my fabric is just bunching up and I really need this side fabric to spread out more to help, uh, then I cut into it. But you can pre-cut. You just want to be careful you don't make too many. So now repeat this with your lining pieces. Once again, the smaller opening is going to go against the circle, just like that, right sides together. 
Okay, once you have them both clipped, we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along these clipped edges at a half inch seam allowance. I like to sew with the side panel up, so not the circle panel. I find it much easier to sew it like this. Now, yes, this is a mess over here. All you have to do is just make sure none of these clips or this other edge gets underneath the needle. Just focus on the little two inches that you're working on all the way around, okay? And just go slow, just go slow. All right, so I hope that you found that somewhat doable. I feel like with these hats, when you're clipping it in before you sew it, it seems like this is going to be impossible to sew. But then once you get to the machine, as you kind of spread out this side and just work bit by bit, it should feel a lot easier, I hope. So I just wanna quickly flip this out to take a quick look at it because it's so cute. Look at these little hats. This is when you really start seeing it come together. I will say that the uh, cotton canvas here, this was easier to sew along that curve than the interfaced quilt cotton. So the thicker your material, the more firm your material, the more of a challenge it's going to be to sew, but it still wasn't oh, that challenging. Look how cute this is. Okay, okay, I'm getting distracted. Let's get this done. So now what I'm gonna do is trim down the seam allowance because it is very, very bulky. I'm gonna trim it along just in half, pretty much. I'm just gonna go around carefully trimming this because we have so many curves here this panel here can kind of sneak up and you can accidentally cut it and you got to remake it so let's just carefully trim down this seam in half that's the lining i'm gonna do the same thing for the exterior all right now what i like to do before i move on is top stitch around this top edge it gives it a cool structure a cool look so what I'm doing is I'm just pushing the seam down behind the side panel, or you can push it against the top if you'd like. I think it's a little bit easier to push it against the side panel. So I'm sticking my hand in here and you can see I'm just pushing the seam towards the side panel. And when I go to the sewing machine, I'll actually sew it like this, I'll show you. So I'm gonna have it kind of bold up like this. I'm gonna push the seam to the right so it's under the side panel. And I'm just gonna top stitch to the right of the seam on the side panel all the way around at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna do the same thing for the exterior piece. It just gives it nice structure and it, it, it just, it looks nice. So once you have your hat sewn, what you wanna do is mark the midpoints on your flaps. So just like we did on the side panel here, we're gonna take our seams and line them up together and kind of flatten it out and use whatever marking device or method you want. I like to use scissors because I don't, I don't lose it. I'm just gonna pinch right here and create a little clip in there. Do the same thing on the other side. A little snipperoo, there we go. And then I'm gonna line it up on the bottom edge, fold over to the side, once again, create a little midpoint mark. It's a midpoint between the midpoint, so it's a quarter point. But it makes it easier to do all this. Go ahead and repeat that for your lining panel as well. Just, just matching up those seams and clipping the midpoint between them. All right, so let's start with the exterior first. I have my exterior top of my hat right side out. I'm just gonna lay it upside down like a bowl, just like that. And then I'm gonna take my flap and I'm gonna lay this, so here's the right side. I'm gonna lay it right side down around the top of that bowl. 
and I'm going to match up the seams. So the seam on my flap with the seam on the side panel, I'm going to match these up. And you see the materials are right sides together. Just get those seams together and clip together. I'm going to flip this and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and then I'm going to find those quarter marks or mid midpoint marks and clip those together. There we go. And then I'm just going to add clips in between going all the way around. Again, I'm not too concerned if there's some bunching. There should be, there should be bunching. So whenever I do curves, I always think of it as a bowl and a wall. One piece of material is the bowl, which is the part that's usually on the inside here. So you tuck it in like a bowl. So this is the bowl piece right here. And then there's the wall, and that's the part on the outside that doesn't get tucked. It usually stays very straight. And anything you're making, a bag, a hat, I always think about that, the bowl and the wall. And I think it just makes it a lot easier to prepare this before sewing and then when you're sewing, because you always, I always sew with the wall side up, the wall wrong side up. And I'm just telling you that curves have become a lot easier for me since I started thinking of it that way. And then when you're clipping, if you want to clip to help something spread out, you never clip the bowl, you always clip the wall. So I'm just going to add little clips here and there again, about a quarter of an inch in, every inch, two inches, half an inch, whatever you feel like you need. I find that this stuff really does spread out very nicely. Again, right here you see it, it's like bubble, bubble, bubble. Like that's gonna be awful, <laughs> but then it's not. It spreads out very nicely at the machine. It, it looks worse and harder here than it actually is. All right, so I'm gonna repeat that same process with my lining material. All right, it's a lot more difficult with the firm interfacing to get this to spread out properly. Uh, one thing you could do if you're using the Sofuse Plus is you could cut back a half of an inch from each side, so the, each of the roundy sides, cut it back a half of an inch so that way the material can spread out a little bit easier. But we're going to give this a try. So now we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew along each of these clipped edges at a half of an inch seam allowance. Again, I'm going to have the flap wrong side up and I'm just focusing on this section right here. Just make sure this edge over here doesn't sneak in and you sew over it, okay? So you gotta kinda keep flipping it up and checking and pulling everything out of the way. Okay, so sewing this on was a lot more difficult than sewing the lightweight vinyl onto the canvas. But at this point, you should be getting a little excited about your hat because you essentially have two, two hats. Look how cute these are. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It doesn't matter what fabric combination you use. It just looks adorable. I love this so much. So I'm gonna once again trim down the seam allowance in half. I'm not gonna do any top stitching along this edge. You definitely could if you wanted to. All right, so the last step is just to put this all together. So you're going to flip them right sides together. So you can kind of shove one into the other if you want, like that. I'm gonna match up the seams on the flaps. Start there, clip those together. And then I'll match up our quarter marks. Clip those together. And then these should be much easier to clip together. There's no bowl and wall here. It's the exact same size. So these should come together very easily and neatly. Okay, so now, before you sew this, we need to leave an opening. 
And for this, the smaller the opening you can leave, the better. So I'm going to pick an opening area that's not next to the seam. And anywhere between two to three inches, again, the smaller you can go, the better, because you will have to close this opening. And it's on the outside, so it's going to be noticeable. And it's curved. So I'm leaving about a two and a half inch mark. Hopefully that's okay since I do have this firmer interfacing. I am a little worried that I'm going to have a hard time with that, but I'm going to try. So I'm going to start at one mark and I'm going to sew at a half of an inch seam allowance all the way around the brim until I get to the other mark. Backstitch really well at the beginning and the end of each of these. Before we turn it out, I'm going to trim down the seam allowance in half, except where the opening is. I'm not trimming the seam allowance where the opening is. That actually makes it easier for us to get that opening closed as neatly as possible by keeping the seam allowance in that one space longer. It makes it easier. You'll see. All right. I left a very small opening. I thought it was like two and a half inches. It's about two inches. Oh, this might be too small. But eh, we'll try. So I am going to just very gently pull everything out through the hole. Now getting the top part of the hat out through the hole is not going to be the challenge. It's the brim. So I'm just going to go slow and gentle. At this point, you probably have some regrets. <laughs> just, just push through. Just push through. You've gone this far. You've got to see it through. All right. My hands hurt. That needed a bigger hole. It 100% needed a bigger hole. But that's okay. So once you have it turned out, what you want to do now is push out the seams. And what I do is I just keep my fingers inside and I push out the seam and fold it nicely. I'm going to fold it from the what I consider the exterior side. And then I add clips all the way around the seam. And having that hole there really helps to be able to put your finger in there or a turning tool or something to really flatten it out all the way around. And just add clips because we're gonna top stitch this and the straighter you can get this, the better it's gonna look in the end. All right, once you're all the way around and you're back at the opening, push this in like that. All you have to do is put your fingers in there and just kind of pull it and it'll flatten it out on its own. But then you do have to kind of manipulate it with your hands to get that bit of a curve. It doesn't have to be a perfect curve, especially if you left a very small opening like I did, but just do your best. You can make this so that it's very unnoticeable. Just give yourself a little bit of time. All right, our bucket hat is looking so good. So now we're gonna go and top stitch around this edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm only going to do one row of top stitching. You can do many. You can top. We're going to do more of that on the last hat, but for this hat, we're going to just top stitch around the edge of this, and that will be the end of this hat. my word this is such a cute little hat now remember this is gonna be way too small for my head uh, this is a child size hat but this is one side of it flip it around and here's the other side that is so cool and I think the firmness is pretty good it's not as floppy as my original hat because we added all that interfacing so I would say the so fuse on the quilt cotton on the lining was a good one um, I would say for the brim, this is a pretty structured brim. So if you wanted the structure, but not so much of the difficulty, I would say just add Sofuse Plus to one of the pieces of the brim material. So either the exterior pieces or the lining pieces, but just add the Sofuse Plus. You don't have to add the Sofuse, even if you're using quilt cotton, and then you can add the Sofuse to the top, but you can see like, this is cute. All right, let's move on to the next one. So the next version is the adult small size. I still don't even know if this is gonna be small enough or big enough for my head, but we'll see. So we have the same pattern pieces as before. 
You can see we have our side panels. So I have two exterior. These are quilt cotton, two lining. They're quilt cotton. All of this is quilt cotton and all of it only has the sew fuse on it, nothing else. So it's a little bit, actually it's a little bit firmer than the cotton canvas. And then same for the top, the crown, lining, exterior, quilt cotton, sew fuse. For the brim, I have two cuts of waterproof canvas with nothing on them. So if this is very loosey goosey. And then I have two cuts of the lining. So this is cotton woven and they both have the sew fuse and the sew fuse plus. So just like the last one we made, a pretty firm brim. And then this is not firm at all. I have fusible fleece, but I gotta be honest, I really don't think I wanna add it. I think if I used fusible fleece, I would wanna not use the sew fuse plus. So here's my tip. Since I already did this, I'm not gonna do the fusible fleece today, but if you wanna use fusible fleece for any of this, I think that would be great. Especially if you wanna make like a winter version of the bucket hat, this could be really cool. Maybe in the next video we'll do that, we'll do a winter version. Uh, with the fusible fleece though, because it is so puffy, I would suggest you cut the seam allowance out. So take your pattern pieces, see this is the same size, trace it out, and then trace half of an inch in from all of the edges and cut it down so it's not in the seam allowance. That would be my suggestion. So for this one, I'm gonna construct it pretty much the exact same way except for one difference. I wanna try having an opening that's not on the brim because that can be a little tricky for some of us. So I wanna try having the opening instead on the side here of the top panel. So just like we did before, let's take our side panels and lay them right sides together. And then on the lining part here, I'm going to leave, how big of an opening? I'm gonna leave a three inch opening on one side. And that's how I'm gonna turn the whole thing out in the end. So I'm not gonna sew between those two lines right there. So let's go ahead and prep our Flaps as well, so flaps right sides together and clip along these short straight edges. Okay, now we're gonna sew along all these clipped edges at a half of an inch seam allowance, except between this opening. So I will be back stitching at the beginning and end of all of these, but I will also be back stitching right here at the mark and leaving this open. Uh, I mean, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> let's press open the seams on the flaps. So I'm just gonna finger press these open. You can also press them with an iron if you'd like. Since we're stitching them, I find just finger pressing them and then keeping them down at the machine is fine. Do the same thing for the exterior piece. And then once you have the seams pressed, let's take it to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along both edges of the seams on the flaps. got that, let's put those flaps to the side and let's work on the side panels. So if you already watched the last hat, you can skip down to the timestamp so you can see how it works out with this opening over here. Otherwise, continue on with me. I've got my iron here and I am going to press open the seam on the side panel. And the reason I press the side panels with an iron and not the flaps is because I don't top stitch the side panels. When I'm gonna top stitch down these two pieces, I can hold it down in place long enough. I don't really need to iron it, but since I'm not gonna be doing that, I need it to kind of stay like this on its own. And now over here we have the opening. We wanna do the same thing. So carefully press it down. I mean, you shouldn't have much trouble here. Just press it down, open. And we still have that hole just like that. See, pretty neat. Pretty neat. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the exterior. Okay, so now let's put together the top of the hat. So take your side panels and fold them together so that the seams are matching up right here in the middle and then pull out to the side and we're marking quarter marks so the midpoint of the midpoints and these seams are what we are considering the midpoints so i'm going to do this on the top and bottom of both side panels and also both flaps once you have the midpoints marked on all those, make sure you mark the midpoints on the circles as well. So I'm just gonna fold them in half. It doesn't really matter how you fold them in half, just anywhere. 
and then like a taco. And I'm gonna clip the corners just like that. And I'm gonna unfold it and refold it so that those clips I just made line up. And then I'm gonna clip the corners again so that I have quarter marks made. Okay, so now grab your side panel. You can see there's a smaller opening and a larger opening. We're working on the smaller opening. I have it wrong side out. I'm gonna set it up just like this. And then I'm gonna take my top panel and lay that right side down. And I'm gonna match up the seam with one of my marks on my top panel. And clip those together. And I'm gonna take the opposite end mark and match that up with the other seam and clip together. And then I'm gonna take the remaining marks, line those up, and then I'm just gonna clip the sides together. And it's going to be bumpy, that's okay. The inner circle is gonna be wavy, that's fine. Just make sure that the raw edges are lined up, that's all. Just don't let one be tucked in real deep and the other one up high, you know what I mean? Because then you won't catch it, you won't, you won't sew it together. All right, once it's all clipped together, I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm gonna cut in every inch to two inches or so into the side panel, not the circle top. And I'm just cutting about a quarter inch in from the edge. And this is gonna help the side panel spread out when we sew it. And honestly, when I made my first version and I didn't have any interfacing, I did not need to make those clips. My material stretched enough on its own. So I'm gonna repeat that for the two lining pieces. All right, now let's take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along these clipped edges at a half of an inch seam allowance. I like to sew with the side wrong side up, not the circle. The circle part goes on the bottom, the side goes wrong side up, and just go slow, inch by inch. these are sewn I like to trim the seam allowance in half just be very very careful that none of the fabric from the top or from the sides creep in under your scissors and then you cut a hole that would be so sad don't do that so I'm gonna trim the seam on both the exterior and the lining okay now let's flip it right side out just to take a quick look it looks so cute doesn't it so what I like to do now is push the seam towards the side and then top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance on the side. So at the sewing machine is where I just kind of finger press the seam so that it's under the side panel, not the center panel. And then I top stitch all the way around on the side panel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just holding that seam down. It is completely optional. You do not have to do that at all if you don't want to. Uh, you can push it to the top if you'd like, but I prefer it on the side. Now we have our tops of our hats all ready to go and we just have to add the flaps to each and sew it together and turn it out through that hole which I'm a little nervous about. So I'm gonna grab my exterior and lay it so that it's right side out but I'm laying it upside down like a bowl and then I'm going to take, oh, this is my exterior material, this is my exterior flap and I'm gonna lay my flap right side down around it kind of like a tutu and then I'm gonna match up my seams so my material is right side to right side and I'm gonna match up the seams on the side panel and the flap and clip together. Do the same thing on the other side with the other seams. 
and then match up the midpoint marks that you made, so like quarter point marks. Match those up, clip together. Same on the other side. And then just add clips around the remaining edges. All right, so there's the exterior. I'm gonna do the same thing for the lining pieces. All right, and once again, if you need to clip into the flap panels to help it spread out a little bit, you definitely can do that. But then we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew along both of these curved edges at a half of an inch seam allowance. I will be sewing it with the flap wrong side up on the top, just like this. So once those are sewn on, once again, I'm going to just trim the seam allowance in half carefully. Don't want to accidentally trim any other fabric. You see how this likes to skirt up like that. You don't want to trim that on accident. So now let's just take a quick peek at these. So this is cute. This is like, you know, I mean, it doesn't always have to be so extra, right? You could have a very nice neutral bucket hat. That's fine. It can be a little extra, you know, it's a little extra. I like it. All right, so now we're just going to sew these right sides together. So I'm just gonna take my exterior and plop it down right on top. You can push through if you'd like to make it easier to line it up. I'm gonna line up my seams and my flaps are right sides together. And I'm just gonna line up all the way around the edges. I do like to line up the seams first and also those quarter point marks we made. I like to get those lined up just to make sure nothing, nothing funny happens. And then I'll just clip around the entire edge. Now let's sew along this edge completely. We're not leaving any opening because our opening is actually inside here. So we're gonna sew around this edge completely at a half of an inch seam allowance. You know, if you wanted just a tiny bit of a longer brim, you could just sew this at a quarter inch seam allowance. This seam right here is probably the one that matters the least with what size it is. So if you wanted a shorter brim, uh, measure it at a three quarters of an inch seam allowance, and then trim it down. Or if you want a longer brim, do a quarter inch seam, seam allowance. I mean, you have, you have room here with the brim. Personally, I like a bit of a longer brim. I know at some point it stops being a bucket hat and starts turning more into like a sun hat with a longer brim, but I don't know, I, I like I like the combination of them. I like the combination of the bucket hat and then the longer brim. I think it looks really cool. All right, now, moment of truth. We're gonna see if we can turn it all out through this small hole here. Again, you can have a small hole. You can have a two inch hole as long as your material isn't ridiculously thick. The thicker your material is, the bigger of a hole you're gonna need. But I think this is actually gonna work out fine for what we're using coming out pretty easily. All right, that actually came out fine. So before we close up that hole, we wanna finish the brim of the hat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my fingers in that hole and then I push out the seam real nice. So it's nice and straight. You don't want anything wonky here. And then I add a clip and I'm gonna go around the entire seam for the brim of our hat doing this. All right, once you have it all clipped, we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and just top stitch along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Here it is, it's adorable. 
So let's talk about closing up the hole in the lining. Now, personally, the way I would prefer to close this is with hand stitching. I would hand stitch this close with a ladder stitch. Now, I don't think I've gone over ladder stitches before, and I know a lot of you guys are not gonna wanna do it <laughs> because you do prefer that we close this with the sewing machine, which we can do. So, let's see if we can figure out how to make it a little fun. So this is going to look best if this remains the lining and you don't, I mean, we'll see, we'll see, let's try this. So I've got a fun tag. Ideally we want a tag that's not going to stick out a ton. In my opinion, I don't really want it sticking out a ton. And this one is really cool because it says, I took forever to make, it really didn't, but it's, it's funny. But the words are all are right along the bottom edge. So I can just kind of plop this in here and tuck it down further in than I normally would so it doesn't stick out as much. See, that looks pretty cool. And now I'm gonna clip this in place and I'm gonna top stitch right along that opening at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and the end, and we'll see how it looks. So you can see when you top stitch it like that, it puckers out a little bit versus the other seam where it's nice and flush. This one puckers out just a little bit. That's where if you do a hand stitching ladder stitch, you can get it flush. So if you guys would like to see how to do a ladder stitch on another one, let me know and we'll do another bucket hat where we close it up that way. However, this hat looks amazing. So let's put this to the side and work on the last hat. So this hat we've already made. I still, honestly, I just love the lightweight feel of just the cotton woven material. Only one bit of interfacing here. I think it's great. Uh, the only thing I wanna do for this one is I wanna add about, mm, let's do three more rows of stitching right here. I'm gonna space it out by about a quarter inch each because my presser foot on the right side of my presser foot is about a quarter inch. So as long as I just line up the edge of my presser foot with the previous stitching, I'll be about a quarter of an inch away from it. So I'm gonna do about three lines there just to see how that works. I'm also going to stitch right in the seam here and I'm gonna to try to catch the back. So we'll work on that in just a moment and then I think we will add a couple grommets but I don't know about adding a strap because I don't think I have the right material for it. But we'll see. Let's first start with adding the stitches. So I'm just gonna go one at a time. I'm actually gonna start in the seam because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my needle down in the seam here a quarter of an inch in from the previous stitch line. I'm gonna go all the way around till I get back to where I started. And instead of like cutting the threads each time, I'm just gonna go up a quarter of an inch following that seam and then go around again, up again. I'm gonna do three more lines, I think. That detail looks very nice. I think that we could definitely have uh, spaced them out a little bit more, maybe three eighths of an inch, but I still think it looks really nice. So now what I'm gonna do, and this part's a little tricky, what I wanna do is I want to sew in the seam right here. So in the ditch, it's called stitching in the ditch because we're sewing right in that seam. And I want to attach the two pieces of material so they don't disconnect in this area. Uh, the hardest thing about that is just making sure that I'm also in the right place on the back side. So I'm going to go to the sewing machine and just put my needle right in the seam. And I'm pretty much just going to be using my fingers as I go around, trying to make sure I'm lining up the seam on the back with the seam on the front so that I get it all together. And this will just make sure that none of the material on the flap separates. So I did that, and while it looks fine on this side, when you look at the back, I didn't get it in the exact space I wanted every time. So honestly, for that 
little trick, I would say pass on that one. You don't need to do that. I think that adding the rows on the flap is really cool and you can definitely go all the way up. Uh, I would definitely say that's a good one, but adding the stitching right here, I don't think is, I don't think is that necessary, honestly. And I think it, yeah, I would, I would pass on that one. Okay, last, last thing we want to try are some grommets. Now let's see how we want to do this. I think I'm going to put the grommets on this seam right here. There's really not a front and the back since I, my print is all over the place, but I think I'm going to add a couple grommets. You can add them to the top or the bottom. Let's see. You know what? I might skip the grommets because I, so some sewing machines can do a stitched grommet which is ideal because especially for us, we will be wearing these in the pool. We'll be washing them in the washing machine. Um, a metal grommet over time might start to rust, especially with all the salt water we have here at the beaches and everything. So I think I'm actually going to skip the grommet for another one until I figure out a way to use my sewing machine to make a stitched grommet. But if you have a digital sewing machine, go ahead and check. You probably have a setting on there to do a stitched out little hole uh, and that's gonna be a great grommet. For you all right so we we accomplished most of the things i wanted to try we didn't have to kind of skip a couple things so let's see first quilt cotton only no woven interfacing one piece of interfacing around the flap which is the sofuse plus which is equivalent to like craft fuse so if you can't find the sofuse plus try a pelon craft fuse i believe it's pelon 808 uh one layer of that around just one part, one piece of fabric, right? So I picked like the watermelon fabric. I adhered it to that. I did not apply any woven interfacing to it, just the Sophie's Plus. Personally, I love this hat. I love how lightweight it is. It's very hot here in summer in Florida. Uh, the last thing I want is more warmth on my head when I'm trying to protect myself from the sun. So I think this is a great option. I am interested in trying the sewn on grommets, because again, I mean, you could use the metal grommets, but again, with all the salt water and the humidity here, I feel like over time those could rust potentially. So I'm gonna skip that for now. I do love the detailing on the flap. I think definitely I could probably do a few more rows. That looks really cool. I like that a lot. I sewed these two pieces of fabric at the seam here, and I think that's just completely unnecessary because you can see over here, you see how you can see the stitching? It's not exactly in the seam like it is on the front, so it is what it is. So let's put this hat on, see how if it changed at all since we did the stitching. I love this hat. I know it's big. This is a size large, like I said, uh, but I think it's fantastic. I really do. I love how big it is. I, I love this. I love this size. All right, we also did this version. This is the kids' version, as you can see. There is no way this is fitting on my knock. <laughs> This is for six to eight year olds. Uh, I would say it's even tighter because of the material and the stuff we added to it. So for this version, we used a lightweight vinyl. Thumbs up for that. I think that was a great idea. We used cotton canvas. Big thumbs up for that. I think the cotton canvas is probably the best material for this hat uh, with no interfacing. And then on the lining, we used a quilt cotton with the interfacing, which was, is okay. But then on the flap, I used the quilt cotton with the Sofuse interfacing, which is like just a woven interfacing, like a Pellon SF-101. And then I also added the Sofuse Plus, which again is like a craft fuse from Pellon. And I think that's too much. I think that was too much. I would say either, especially with the combination of the vinyl, I would say either just the Sofuse, the woven interfacing, you know, and then the vinyl, or, like no vinyl and just the craft. I think, I just feel like it's kind of like, you can see in here, it's kind of bunchy. It's just, it's all just a little thick and I feel like this will get a little toasty over time with all that interfacing. But I do love the cotton canvas and I love the vinyl combo. I wanna make another one of these in my size uh, with more lightweight material or just, just less interfacing on the material for the lining. And then this one, which I don't know, it might be my favorite. It's so cute. This is probably more like the traditional bucket hat. Let me put it on. Let me show you. Let me show you. It's cute. It's cute. Look at this. So this is what, this, this pretty much fits. This is a size small. It's a little tight on my head, but um, it wouldn't blow off in the wind. I can feel that like I can be out there on a windy day and I don't have to worry about it. Blow up. This looks, I look like I need to go on a boat, right? Who's got a sailboat? I feel like this needs to go on a boat. Look how cute that. 
this is a this is a cute hat. Oh, I think my mom's gonna probably take this hat. But I love the waterproof canvas on the brim. Love the waterproof canvas. I wish I would have done it on the bottom as well. I think waterproof canvas on the brim, top and bottom, perfect idea. This is actually a water resistant canvas, so it's even more lightweight. Perfect material for the brim. So the waterproof canvas, big thumbs up. Uh, I used quilt cotton, which is cotton woven, a lightweight material with the sew fuse. I think that was also a great idea. I think I think that, that that works out great. You definitely have more structure. So this one here is with no interfacing, right? Loosey goosey. This one is with the interfacing. As you can see, it's a lot more structured. This is like, this is like a fun sun hat. This is like a bucket hat, bucket hat. I think this one looks so cool. And then let's flip it inside out because the other thing we tried was closing it a little bit differently. I do like not having to close it on the brim because then you don't have to worry about any weird little wonky bits. Uh, but I do think we need to hand sew this. Like, I mean, this is cute. Here, let me put it on the side. I'll show you guys. So you see, I mean, it sticks out a little bit. It's not that big of a deal. I think it still looks cute. If you really didn't like it, you just put it to the back. Nobody will notice, there you go. This is a cute shape, this is a cute shape. I like this hat a lot. Oh, I love this hat. But yeah, I do think that adding the closure on the side is a great idea, especially if it's for a lining and you're not really gonna be flipping it in and out a lot. If you're pretty much gonna keep this as the lining, this is not gonna be the exterior. That definitely just closes up. You don't have to add a tag here. You can just close it up like this. No one's ever gonna know. Um, however, if you did want to flip it in and out and you didn't like this little pinched bit right here, I would suggest you do a ladder stitch. Uh, I'll try to find a video and put it on down in the description below, but a ladder stitch is going to allow you to keep that nice flush seam like we do on this side over here, but you do have to use a needle and thread, a little bit of hand stitching. So I hope that you have as much fun making these bucket hats as I do. Oh my goodness, I have so many more I want to make. I gotta make one for everybody in my family. I just love too how the different sizes, definitely try the sizes. Now, when you download the pattern from Mood, when they email it to you, they do have measurements. So you can actually measure your head and get the right size. You don't have to be like me, Goldilocks over here, trying to figure out which one fits your noggin. You can measure your head, however, I would suggest trying different ones because again, this one, which is a size small, and this one, which is a size large, are very different besides size, of course, but the shape of them. This is like a floppy, big brim sum hat. This is like a bucket hat, bucket hat, more straight. I mean, it's just, oh, you guys. If you've been making these, let me know. Put a comment down below. Let me know if you're working on bucket hats this summer. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye, guys.